So what is DNA? Well, it's probably one of life's most important molecules. So let me tell you all about it. Okay, so first of all, we know that living things are made of cells. And you and I, for example, are made of trillions of cells. And the thing is, all cells contain information. Basically, that information tells our cells how to do everything that they need to do. But the question that biologists have always been wondering was, how is this information stored? This was essentially one of the biggest questions in biology. And two guys named James Watson and Francis Crick were responsible for solving this mystery. And the solving of this mystery was one of the biggest discoveries in biological history. It happened in 1953. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick discovered that DNA was actually the molecule that stores information inside of cells. This is DNA here. So DNA is a type of nucleic acid. To be precise, it's deoxyribonucleic acid. Hence the name DNA. All right, and DNA is a macromolecule. That means it's a very large molecule made up of smaller subunits. And the smaller subunits that it's made up of are called nucleotides. Now, nucleotides look like this. They consist of a phosphate molecule, a sugar molecule, and a nitrogen base. Now, the phosphate and the sugar are always the same in DNA, but the nitrogen base can be one of four types of base. It can be either adenine A, thymine T, cytosine, C, or guanine, G. I've got some of those here that I've prepared. So let's bring them in. There's our adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. We usually just refer to them as A, G, T, and C. It's a lot simpler, it's a lot easier to remember. It's what I recommend for you. So. The thing about DNA is that it's double-stranded, as you saw in the model that I brought in before. And the other thing is, these bases, and this is one of the critical discoveries to understanding the structure and how DNA stores information, is that these bases pair up in a complementary manner. Two of them always go together, and the other two always go together. And the way that works is A always pairs up with T. And G always pairs up with C. We call that complementary base pairing. And that is exactly how it works. Now you'll notice in the orientation that I've now put them, the sugar and the phosphate repeat. We have sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. If we were to continue, you would continue to see that with sugar, phosphate repeating on and on and on. Our bases are in the middle they are going to be different, and that's actually where the information is stored, in those random sequences of those four bases. But the sugar phosphate along the sides, we call that the sugar phosphate backbone. Now, if we bring in our molecule again, so here I've unraveled the DNA molecule, and you can see here, the white section is our sugar, and the black section is our phosphate. And notice how that just repeats over and over again. Sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. And then, let's say our orange and green are our C and Gs, where you can see orange and green, orange and green, orange and green, always paired up. And blue and red, not the same colour that I use for my A and T, but let's say they're A and T. So A and T, A and T, A and T always paired up, so complementary base bearing and a sugar phosphate backbone. Now, of course, DNA doesn't stay in this formation. I often refer to it as a ladder, but we call DNA structure a double helix. 
And a double helix is where you take a ladder and you twist it, like so. Alright, so now that we know about the nucleotide subunits that make up our DNA, it's time to go through a summary of all of the key points about a DNA molecule. Okay, so let's summarise the key features of our DNA. First of all, DNA, as we've talked about, is made up of two complementary strands. They pair together because those base pairs, A and T and C and G, always pair up. We call the structure of DNA a double helix, which is like a ladder that's been twisted, almost like a spiral staircase. Okay, secondly, it contains a sugar phosphate backbone. The sugar phosphate backbone is simply coming from the sugar and phosphate group in nucleotides which have been placed end on end on end on end. So you have sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate over and over again. DNA is made up of four types of nucleotide. The four types, as we've talked about, are A, T, C and G. And the only thing that determines what type of nucleotide we have is the type of nitrogen base. Sugar and the phosphate are always the same, and the type of base is the thing that changes. In DNA, we see complementary base pairing, where we have our A pairs up with T, and C pairs up with G. DNA is the genetic information of living things. That is the key point to this video. When we ask what is DNA, that is what DNA is. It's the genetic information. What does genetic information mean? It means it's the information for cells that is passed on from one generation to the next. So DNA is the critical molecule that contains all of the information for cells. Every single cell contains DNA and that DNA is passed on from one cell to the next, hence the term genetic information. And finally, DNA is able to self-replicate. And that's another video in itself, but DNA's, one of its great features is that it is able to self-replicate, which means it can actually make copies of itself, critical to carrying that information from one cell to the next. Now I hope this has helped and explained to you a bit of context about what is DNA. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.